Here I've got a nice viewer suggested problem that was recently on a Bangladesh math Olympiad. And this problem involves the floor function, which if you've been around the channel long enough, you know I really like the floor function. So our goal here is to find all real numbers x satisfying this cubic equation. We have the floor of x cubed minus 7 times the floor of x plus 1 third equals negative 13. And this plus one third here is really giving us a big hint of how to break this kind of naturally into cases. So let's maybe do that first. So let's start by writing x as n plus epsilon, where n is an integer, and then epsilon will be a real number between 0 and 1, including 0 but not including 1. Notice that tells us that the floor of x is equal to n. So we can hopefully write this as an equation without the floor function that just involves integers. And like I alluded to before, this is going to naturally break into two cases based off of this x plus third. So let's look at this first case. And that first case is if epsilon is on our interval 0 to 2 thirds, not including 2 thirds, but we can include 0. Now let's notice that means epsilon plus 1 third is on the interval from 1 third to 1, not including 1, and thus the floor of x plus 1 third is still equal to n, because we haven't gone across to n plus 1. Okay, but now in this case, our equation simplifies very nicely to n cubed minus 7n equals negative 13. But I'm going to move that 13 over and write it as plus 13 equals 0. Now you can easily check that there are no solutions here by the rational root theorem. So let's write that down. So no solutions by rational root root theorem. So let's recall that the possible rational roots would be plus minus 1 and plus minus 13 because it's plus minus all of the divisors of 13 over all of the divisors of 1, but 13 is obviously prime. Plus and minus 1 don't work and plus and minus 13 don't work, so that means there are no rational roots and thus there are no integer roots. Okay, nice. So now let's move on to our second case. So our second case will obviously be maybe the complement of this case. And that's going to be if epsilon is on the interval 2 thirds to 1. Okay, but let's notice that means that epsilon plus 1 third will be on the interval 1 to 4 thirds. Okay, nice. But in this case, we see that the floor of x plus 1 third will be equal to n plus 1. So it scales past the level where we, where we get a larger value for this floor function. Okay, and so now again, we can rewrite our equation using this data. And now we have n cubed from this minus 7 times n plus 1 because again, that floor of x plus third is n plus one, equals negative 13, but I'll write this as plus 13 equals zero. But now we can rewrite this as n cubed minus 7n, then we have minus 7 plus 13, and so in the end, that's going to give us plus 6 equals zero. Now we can use the rational root theorem again to guess some rational roots. And after we guess a rational root, we can maybe divide out and get a nice factorization here. So let's notice that n equals 1 satisfies this equation because we have 1 plus 6 is 7 minus 7 is 0. So that means we know we should be able to write this as n minus 1 times something. But then we can just guess and check the rest of it. So we know that it has to be an n squared here and a minus 6 here. Then we just have to figure out the coefficient of n. But playing around with it for a little bit, we'll see that a coefficient of 1 for n works. 
So notice here we'll have n times negative 6 is negative 6n, minus 1 times n is negative n, add those up to negative 7n, and then the n squared terms cancel because we have a negative n squared and a positive n squared term. But now this guy further factors to, let's see, n plus 3 times n minus 2. So in the end, I can write this as n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n plus 3 equals 0. Okay. But that means that we have solutions. n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals negative 3. But now let's recall that each of those solutions correspond to an interval of solutions in the real numbers because we've got this floor function involved. In fact, if we have a solution n, given the fact that epsilon is between two-thirds and one, that means x will be between n plus two-thirds and n plus one, like that. So let's see what we get. We'll work from the smallest. So that first one is going to be negative three plus two-thirds. So that's going to be negative seven-thirds. So we have negative seven-thirds up to two, not including two. So that's from this guy. And then union, what we get from n equals one, so that's going to be five-thirds up to two, not including two. And then finally, union, what we get for n equals two. So let's see, that's going to be eight-thirds up to three. So in the end, this... It, so in the end, this disjoint union of half open, half closed intervals represents our solution set for our given equation. And that's a good place to stop.